Soldiers have a job that's unlike any other, where they're exposed to exceptional stressors that most of us probably can't even imagine. As a result of these occupational demands they're exposed to, soldiers are vulnerable to developing mental health problems. In 2008, it was estimated that approximately 18% of soldiers returning from Iraq or Afghanistan were experiencing a mental health problem, like post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. But the even bigger problem is that a lot of these soldiers who are experiencing a mental health problem aren't getting the treatment that they need to get better. In 2006, a study of soldiers returning from Iraq found that of those who screened positive for a mental health problem, 86% acknowledged that they did think they had a problem, but only 40% were even interested in seeking help. And then further, only 15% had actually sought help from a mental health professional within that past year. So researchers are asking, why aren't soldiers going to get treatment? Past studies have highlighted factors like stigma associated with getting treatment and practical constraints, but for my thesis, I wanted to focus more on what encourages or facilitates soldiers to go get treatment. So I looked at the role of social support in getting soldiers into mental health treatment. I analyzed survey data that came from about 1,700 active duty soldiers. As part of that survey, they were asked to rate the extent to which their family and friends, their fellow unit members, and their leaders would encourage them to go get treatment if they needed it. And I found that their support and encouragement was related to a more positive attitude on the, of the soldier toward getting mental health treatment, which was ultimately related to their decision of whether or not they sought treatment. I found this relationship was strongest when I was looking at support coming from family and friends, probably because those are the ones closest to the soldier. And I also found that this relationship depended on the problem that the soldier was experiencing, which I defined as functional impairment. That's the extent to which a problem is interfering with a soldier's ability to perform their work, their home, and their family roles. So I found that when a problem was causing a high amount of impairment, support seemed to matter a little bit less, probably because those symptoms warranted treatment on their own. But when a problem was more moderate or low in impairment, the, soul, the support from family and friends and unit members and leaders had a stronger relationship with treatment seeking through attitude. So overall, these results highlight that friendly and friends, unit members and leaders are all valuable resources for soldiers in encouraging them to get treatment, especially if a problem is more moderate and the soldier may not be as sure if they need treatment. It's my hope that the results of my thesis will be applied in enhancing the resources that are available to soldiers to encourage them to get treatment so they can remain mentally fit as they continue to serve our country.